haven't done a huge amount of work of looking at Jonathan Mogbo, yeah. but he's a guy that you wanted to talk about. So I'm going to give you the floor here on Mogbo, <laughs> who is a forward big sort of player from San Francisco. He really strong rebounding numbers, 14 rebounds per 40 minutes. He obviously playing for a in a, a team that we don't normally see NBA players come through. He had not super high usage, not a shooter or anything like that. What's what's Jonathan Mogbo? Yeah, so he's one of the more interesting players in this class to me. Definitely more of a deep sleeper, but I would uh, spend a draft pick on him. I think the pitch overall is in his athleticism and defensive versatility. I think that he is capable of guarding as many or as many different players in his draft as anyone out there. Um, I think you look at his ability to do those two things and make plays and you can see it in the combine, just being able to to do a number of things. Well, that's what he's going to have to do at the, at the NBA level to find a spot, obviously being a little bit of a tweener at that four or five spot. I think he's going to transition more into being a wing or a forward at the next level. He's going to have to either shoot it or just be in the right context. We see a guy like a Jared Vanderbilt is Mm. um, somebody I think he could emulate in a lot of ways um, if he's in the right situation. So, Really, just the overall pitch with him is uh, a high-level defender who can defend multiple positions, Um, somebody who is athletic enough to finish a lot of plays, was one of the league or one of the leaders in college basketball in dunks this year, Um, can operate as a a hub uh, offensively and being able to do some side-to-side things and continuity, but can also grab it off the rim, take it up the court, has a point guard background. was a late bloomer in, in high school growing from like six two, six three to, to six nine over a couple of years after going the JUCO route to Missouri State and then to San Francisco. So I think you're looking at a, a more of a late bloomer guy, older, of course, um, but just has a, a number of different skills that I like and he moves well enough. Um, I think that he can make something happen. So the the assist numbers are really inter- interesting. Five point one assists per forty minutes is really high for a guy that is like yeah, you said a, a four or five who's not a shooter at mm-hmm. all. Again, let's go back into lazy NBA comparison guy. You'll see undersized, big rebounder, small school, dreadlocks. I go Kenneth Reed. Right? <laughs> that's, that's that's again. I just use that initial thing. It's it's a bad way to do it, but we're all subject to it at, at some point. So Kenneth Reed came in, dominated the rebounding part of the NBA really early on, and then just disappeared because he didn't develop that that sort of other part of his game didn't develop anything defensively, didn't develop anything shooting-wise. Given the size of Mogbo, you said, look, he might have to play more on the wing. The other name that comes to mind is a little bit of a precious Achua as well, who is like, can he shoot? What the hell does he do offensively? Where does he sort of fit in? But the defense is there. So look, yeah, with Mogbo, yeah. do you have more confidence in him being able to be a perimeter defender or turning into a guy that can shoot a little bit out there if he does have to play down a little bit? I have I have a lot of confidence in his defense. Like I I legitimately think that he could eventually guard, you know, the, the ways that the Lakers put Jared Vanderbilt on Curry um in their playoff series last year and just defending at the point of attack at times. I think that he has the tools to potentially do that. Now, all the other stuff, the energy, the rebounding, the stuff that Vanderbilt brings, that's stuff that it's kind of uh, in the air more, but the potential for him to guard in multiple spots in the in the NBA, I think that he has that. Now, everything else is more in question on offense, being able to develop the shot. We just haven't seen it too much. Like, he has barely even taken threes, even when you go back to um, his freshman year at uh, Independence um, Juco in, in Kansas. Um, so, you know, I think that it's defense first, athleticism. If he's in the right situation, maybe he's able to do a couple things at the four spot. Like, if you put him in a Denver situation – um, it's a lot easier than some other places where a center, like a uh, you have a rim running center in this, you have to be able to shoot at the four or on the wing. So that would be kind of the, the, the pitch for him. Well, today's episode is brought to you by Better Help. There are many of many stresses that we all have in our lives, whether you are an NBA scout or a GM trying to figure out which player is higher on your board or not, you're a team. 
that is making a selection high in the draft and you're worried about what they're going to do. Like, that's small. It's trivial stuff for some of it. Some of it's big. It might be your job that's involved in this. But we need to get things off our chest and an unbiased person in your life might be a therapist. And that is a way that you can use therapy. It doesn't have to be for all of the big things all of the time, but learning the coping skills to deal with these things is a key part of what therapy is able to do. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, you can give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient. It's flexible, suited to your schedule. So all you got to do is just fill out your brief questionnaire. You get matched with a therapist who is uh, a fit for you. But if you meet up with them and have a session and it doesn't work out, well, you can just switch to another therapist for no additional charge. So get it off your chest with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash LockedOnNBA.